it must be a huge relief, even though you kind of know it's funny. When you hear them a long time, I guess they start to rub off a little bit. When you hear an audience like that just laughing away, I mean, yeah, did you feel amazing. relieved? It's really nice. Amazing. Real thrill. Thank you for laughing. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, with television, you usually don't. Well, that's true, yeah. yeah. It really, yeah. you don't know what people are making yeah, of it true. at home. Hmm. So, the last time you kind of all worked together as an ensemble was on Yonderland, and you've continued to go out and do your own projects and... and, and uh, in, in, in the big wide world, but what was it that brought you back for this project? Were there other things you talked about, or how did you get to Ghosts? We talked about a number of ideas. We we sort of, when we were still doing Yonderland, we you know we're always sort of thinking about what would be the next thing, what would be the next thing. Nothing sort of lasts uh, forever. And we talked about doing a sketch show. We talked about various other narrative ideas, and then um, I think just after we'd made series three, we were sort of Yonderland. We were sort of thinking about whether or not if the offer came to do a fourth, whether or not we'd, we'd do it. And at that point, we kind of rented a room and sat down and went, well, what would be the next thing? And Ghosts, we wanted it to be sort of, you know, to some degree multi-character and to do all the silly things we do. And Ghosts came up sort of on day one. And because it came up on day one, we went, well, that can't be the right no. idea. And so <laughs> <laughs> chased a number of other dogs we, down um, Dead End Avenue. We should have gone with my Brexit idea. <laughs> I think someone's kind of doing that comedy. <laughs> and um, in terms of, um, you know, the BBC obviously gave you the, um, the sort of the development opportunity to then go away and, and, and sort of do something with this. Um, you write sort of in little groups or, or individually, but you together come up with the concept for the whole series, do you? How, how does that work? Yeah, we sort of bash ideas around, don't we, as a group? And mm. then, so when, so we kind of come up with an outline, basically, of, of the episode or the, or the whole series. And then by the time whatever combination of people are going off to write their episodes, you kind of have a really clear outline. You sometimes have whole bits of dialogue with mm -hmm. you yeah. and jokes yeah. and stuff. So you kind of piece it all together and then we come back to the room and we sort of, bash that about again and so it's quite collaborative but even though people have written their own episodes you can't the ideas there's material in everyone's exactly. episodes from yeah. other people so yeah. it's, it's which is great because yeah. it means if something gets a really big laugh you can claim it's yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, no one will ever really yeah. know <laughs> all of that was me and Jim yeah. 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 I know exactly the jokes I've written because there's three yeah. Yeah. And, and in terms of deciding who would play which characters and what would play to your strengths, uh, how, how was that decided? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was perfectly obvious. Yeah. Some some uh, came easier than others. Yeah, I think, yeah. Best, so. yeah. I think we knew. I think we knew pretty uh, early on when we started talking about what periods and what ghosts, uh, what characters rather would. It was pretty obvious. Wasn't yeah, it? I mean, I was I, I was I mean, I really keen to. Uh, initially, when we started talking about it, we were all going to play an awful lot of characters. And we realised quite early on that was going to be uh, production-wise quite impossible. But my sort of main character when we were initially developing it was going to be a Headless Humphrey character. <laughs> and I said, you know, a caveman. We like the idea of doing ghosts that were outside of that sort of traditional Elizabethan up to yes. World War II chunk of history. And so we liked having really modern ghosts and really old ghosts. And we said we should have a caveman. For some reason, nobody ever thinks of there being caveman ghosts. And I was like, I'll do it. But I'm, I don't want to do it every day because that's too much makeup. So we'll do it. Yeah. So So both of the roles you took involved an awful lot of makeup, presumably, but actually probably not as many lines as the other guys. Yeah, I mean, it's, it swings and roundabouts. I mean, the good thing, actually, um, the, with, with Headless Humphrey, I'm the head. But we have another very lovely man called Yanni who's the body. So, whilst it looks like an awful lot of work, from the neck down, I am taking a day off. <laughs> also, Robin actually is surprisingly articulate. At not yeah. in this series, but not in this, this episode. episode. <laughs> so we have a five series outline. <laughs> and, uh, he studies for his PhD in... Uh, um, yeah, he's, the, he's been around the longest, so he's actually the wisest one. So there are moments where his wisdom mm. suddenly shines through and he makes all of the others... We, we like, like the idea that, yeah, he, he'd taken a lot of information, but the, the speech centre of his brain is that big. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a bit of a, a struggle. And, of course, it made sense that, um, with Simon being the most attractive of you, that, yet again, yeah. he should be the one without his trousers. He's got the best legs. He's got great legs. He's got great legs. He does have good legs. He does have legs. He's an incredibly yeah. sporty man. He's very athletic. <laughs> is he? It's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> he plays a lot of golf. Sport. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> That's not why you stick to that. 
It's interesting you have to say that, Martha. He's good with balls. He's good with balls. Why? He's good with golf balls. He's good with balls. Why is this happening? Ping pong football. Oh, God. Martha. And Justin Helps. Presumably, you have a script you're working from. And when you're actually then moving to sort of to rehearse and film, do bits of it change, particularly because it's a new show where you're establishing your character the first time. As you kind of get into your characters a bit more, do you find that bits are changing on the hoof or are no, you actually sticking to it yeah, very rigidly? We've, al- we've always tried to leave room to, to ad-lib. It usually tends to be at the end of a scene that you just sort of leave the cameras rolling and see what comes. But actually, there's a whole bit from Katie that was ad <laughs> At the beginning of the yeah. basket, it, we'd written, I think, the last two lines of to give an impression that there'd been a long speech about how to make wicker baskets. <laughs> and Katie improvised a load of stuff that was too good to leave out. <laughs> so, all five the stuff potatoes about it high. Five potatoes <laughs> high. Of <laughs> course, so, she um, counts oh potatoes. Yeah. So, there is, yeah, there is a lot. And, and we learn a lot from, from doing. I mean, we actually we made a tester. A tester, a taster tape, uh, kind of a mini pilot of the show. And at the time, we thought we were going to do a real multi character number. And that final scene where she can see the ghosts and they're all behind Mike was going to be like a hundred ghosts. It was going to be us multiplied all over the place. And then the more we thought about the show, the more we realized the theme was about it was purgatory it was about being stuck with people that you really don't get on with and you're stuck there forever and if you have a community of a hundred (laughs) people you can escape the people you don't like you know so it it, it, we that's a massive change that came from Mm. from doing and um yeah so things are kind of always open to change i think if anything felt wildly wrong in the first week of shooting we would go back to the scripts and and, 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 and talking of, of change, and I, I may be wrong, but as I understand it, the initial um, kind of premise for the show was actually geared towards a more family-orientated audience. Is that right, or, or was it always it intended to be? When yeah. I think we originally thought we'd do something that was adult and then uh, were persuaded probably rightly to keep it, re- to keep it family. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. it's got a post-Watershed Scott, and, and now it's got really scary yeah. moments now, hasn't it? Well, I think yeah. it was going to possibly be pre-watershed and I think the the reason it couldn't be was the scary stuff you know we haven't written lots of effing and jeffing no but, um, <laughs> no, there's no wow. effing and jeffing that I'm aware of no unless it comes later on who are you or jeff oh no somebody does somebody does um, call me a prick but I don't know whether they got it on camera oh, right <laughs> Sorry, in, in the show. <laughs> yeah, that was at, that was at lunch. <laughs> in fact, the line was meant to be lucky bitch, wasn't it? Yeah, when yeah lucky yeah, bitch. Yeah. We could have, it could have been bitch. Now you go. Now you know series, the series two, will, series, we'll, two. series two will be Robocop, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> and The Shining. And, um, obviously, one of the things that's really important is the sort of the feel of the show. And, and, and I know that finding the right director for you was very important. Mm. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Tom. <laughs> Tell us why you're the right man. Tom did this um, incredible uh, pitch. I mean, he pitched to us with this in- enormous document that just spoke to what we wanted from the show. He, yeah. he'd, we, he'd referenced loads of horror uh, tropes and, you know, at the same time explaining how he could film everything hmm. uh, in camera. Well, we'd started to have conversations about how to practically achieve what we wanted to do, how to capture yeah. the tone, what, you know, sort of asking questions, going, but how would we do that? How would we do that? And without then having had a conversation with Tom, it was like we were presented with a document which was all of the answers. And so at that point, we were just like, well, then this kind of. It was almost spooky <laughs> how he sort of had of references that, w- that, you know, we, yeah. most of us hadn't m- ever met Tom. No. There was one in there was a film called Les Visiteurs, which we yeah. talked about a lot, yeah. which is a great we film about that, these two. We? Yeah. we did, yeah. we did, it was good. It was nice. <laughs> Happy times. And, um, Happy times. Yeah, it was like he'd read our minds. So, But also he's an, a real technical invited. whiz mm. and having the confidence to be able to do those uh, visual effects and not have a, a sort of a whole team of people holding up production every day to have conversations about those things endlessly. Um, 
I mean, this is the most challenging shoot. I think we've uh, all yeah, of yeah. our shoots have been challenging, but this is the most. The, most scenes have eight or ten characters in them, and it's a TV yeah. budget, a TV schedule. We would look at the schedule every day and say, "No, we'll go over today." And then Tom would deliver uh, uh, the whole schedule every day. I'd say bar two. Consistent grouping, <laughs> <laughs> as the captain would say. Also I mean, it was hitting the ball. On a very practical level, yeah. one of the things he talked about when we met him was, "Let's not make it a school photo every time because you've so you can't yeah. you can't do singles of everyone in every in every scene. You have to group them together." And li you know, on a, that's a really simple thing, but inc you know, incredibly uh, well thought through to mm. be considering yeah. how he would group us in ways that was visually interesting and didn't just become flat and boring. Jim, wonder whether I could ask you about the. <laughs> sort of the sorry, <laughs> <Balls away. laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry that was a long there. and boring. Go right down there. Um, <laughs> oh. Do you want to talk a little bit about the sort of the writing groupings in terms of? Um, I know with Yondland you did the same thing. You kind of would pair off with you know, different groups of you and so forth. How is that decided as to who's going to work together and and and, and are there particular sort of pairs of you that work Post well together? Postcode. <laughs> um, I, I don't think this set in stone really who, who we work with writing wise. How's it decided? How, how, you know, how do you well, do the keys in a, yeah. yeah, keys in a hat. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that it, it all really comes down to who's available at the time and who's around. And I think that Matt and I had sort of quite a quiet summer last year, so and we lived close, the closest to each other. So yeah, postcode I suppose is right in that respect. A little bit. But yeah. I mean, We've Simon in was busy doing great yeah, yeah. yeah. films. I mean, Larry and I live nowhere near each other, but we just yeah, make it I work. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Matt, Matt and I wrote some <laughs> episodes for Yonderland in the last series together, and it seemed yeah. to work well. Yeah, but what you're yeah. inferring there, Jim, is that you chose to work with me because I live nearby. <laughs> 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 it's a marriage of convenience. Yeah, um, I made you great right. lunches. I'm going to do this in front of all these people. I mean, <laughs> I made you some great lunches. He did. Um... And <laughs> I, anyway, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's all really, oh, I think, God. to do just with... Just stop, uh, Jim, just... Yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. But, yeah. It, there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, it's not set in stone, basically. It could be anything. It could I be, it could be, be any... Right with that again now. <laughs> 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 I think that's over. Well, one of you's going to have to, I'm not yeah. moving to London. <laughs> <laughs> And I know that this is a very premature question, bearing in mind the first episode hasn't even aired yet, but have you thought about where you might go to where it to be recommissioned? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, can't, they, you can't help but do that with everything that, yeah. you, that you create and write. You're always thinking longer-term story. You have to. There were conversations where, you know, well, we'd be sitting to sort of, you know, in a room waiting to go on when we were filming, mm. and someone would go, you know what we could do? Mm. And the number of things that came up where you go, of course, yes. Yeah. I was about to say one, but then you go, no, don't do that, because they might get to film it. <laughs> it was a terrible spoiler. There was a lovely idea with the phone that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> but also, this feels like the first thing we've done, uh, uh, you know, as writers, that uh, it's classic sitcom, repeatable sort of... Hmm. Yonderland was a, a serial, you know, had a series arc, and while we were making series three, we were aware that mm. it, it wouldn't get better if we made another one. That would run its course, yeah, really. I but agree. this feels like it could go on for a really long... We've got this huge ensemble of characters whose histories we want to yeah. explore. We sort of... Some of their deaths are revealed as the series go, goes on, but there's a lot of mystery as well yeah. around some oh, of yeah. them. So we'd love to do this f a lot, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I mean, as well as being, you say, you know, sort of falls into the sort of the sitcom mold, but it has got that kind of horror sort of genre influence, and it has got a really sort of strong narrative running through it as well. In terms of, uh, you do want to learn more about these characters. You want to learn. I mean, uh, it, beyond just you know being lots of funny things going on, you really want to know the story of mm. whether it's going to become a hotel, what they're going to do now that you can see the ghosts, where that's going to take them, mm. and and there are you know there are other twists I think throughout the series that continue. To I mean, I've only I've seen the first two, mm. and already in the second episode there are more kind of twists undeveloped that I can only imagine are going to continue. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that, I mean, I think that's kind of you know that definitely sort of speaks well in terms of its future, doesn't it? Yeah, and we have all the ghosts backstories as well to investigate if we there's a nice little um, box to open yeah. there if we, if we want to because of course there's we do Martha in the first one but there's a very beautiful episode that uh, Ben Wilbon wrote because Stop he doesn't it. live close <laughs> enough to do <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I don't go south of the river. <laughs> <laughs> because of the way Uber works, Ben writes on his own. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, but despite their natural anonymity, he wrote a really lovely episode for, for um, Jim's character, for Jim's which cat, sort of just are. explores Brilliant. how he came to be who he is and where he is, and it's, it's very lovely. It is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow, Anybody want to take that one? That's a big one. a big one. one. Trying it's to a think big of, creative of a, of a, of a one for you. The Houses of Parliament, probably. <laughs> um, just to see how all this mess play? turns out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watch the comedy. I don't know. Yeah, but you no, know, seriously, I would. Does, yeah. does anybody else want to go for that, or should we plow on? <laughs> Come on, guys. I don't Sorry. think I can um, beat Ben's. No, I think Ben's was so great, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so. excellent. I, I need to think okay, about well, Jim, it. Okay, Jim looks like he's going to take the challenge. <laughs> Spurs. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it's football stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spurs. Yeah. Spurs. Yeah, of course. Is that Thank you. The, the, the audience quiet. in the dressing room. The audience knows Jim. The dressing room. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Can he come out onto the pitch or is he stuck in the dressing room? <laughs> Wait, for them to come back. I, I guess they won. Yeah, I could, yeah. Well, he, he's great. Brilliant. We Brilliant. love his work. Yeah. Main he's really good. Yeah. Yeah. He did uh, excellent work on a show called Flowers, Flowers. that we all yeah. love. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. well, absolutely <laughs> right. So and, yeah, um, he's, um, he's a really nice guy yeah. and really talented. And I think got, also, got the to, yeah, yeah, find the themes that uh, you know play well for the comedy moments, but also the, capture the the horror. It's I think yeah. it would have been easier to find someone who kind of could play one or the other, but struggled with the one that wasn't their strength. But I think he yeah, it needed to be fluid. it needed it needed the drama and the dramatic and all those little fills that that serve the drama but at the same time it still serves the comedy it's a very clever thing to do he's he's excellent he really I mean, because, is because the fact that you know you obviously have all created the show and you're acting in it and you've sort of got a sort of showrunner kind of type credit all of you together does that mean that you were over a lot of those kind of details like the music yeah. and the casting and so i forth? think we were over more of the details than it was fair to tom to be <laughs> <laughs> um tom, tom will one day get a knighthood for dealing with six six idiots 